All right, everybody, welcome in. Let's do some puzzles today. And the reason I mentioned that, um, puzzles of the day, the reason I mentioned that is because that's how we're going to train some tactics. And we're going to practice some, some random positions. And we're going to practice some different aspects of the game so that as our mid game develops, we can try to get a little bit better at spotting some of these things and training our brain how to view um, these situations, right? So this is the first one. Uh, and this one, we are the white pieces. I have not done these yet, so this is all random to me. First thing I do is I scan what assets I have available to me, right? So this is what white has, this is what black has. Uh, looks like more or less we have the same material on board. Um, black is up a couple of pawns. So throw, look, looking for the first check. That's covered. So we can basically force a queen trade, more or less. Does that do anything for us? Not sure. So these are going to be a different kind of video in that more of just trying to figure out what's going on. You may be spotting this way faster than I do. That's okay. Actually, a good thing. Really help anything. Notice there, there is a lot of pressure along here, so I can't really move this pawn because then this rook slides over, and that's pretty much checkmate. Um, so my candidate moves right now is the queen down. I can't visualize what happens next. This queen moves over, and now the queen is here. My rook moves up, now my rook is there. And then it's black's turn to move. They could pretty much force a rook trade, so that's not going to work. All right, let's try to find something else. Um, what happens if I just slide the rook over here? Does that do anything? Not really, because my opponent could simply trade. So for if we look at the, the C1 square, my opponent has two attackers. And if I move this particular rook, I would only have um, one defender. So that's not worth work. Not work. Don't know. I might be stumped on this one, friends. Of course, like I said, my, my two candidate moves right now are to get this first check in, which the reason I'm looking at the first checks is because that's a forcing line. That means that the opponent is required to respond and then I can predict the way that my opponent's gonna respond. Like I said, in one of these, most likely maneuver is the queen um, just capturing. Uh, if we extend that thought a little bit further, forcing a queen trade, black would have to move, and they can pretty much pick up pawns. I pick up pawns. About it. And yeah, I mean, I could know because they'll, they'll have a rook here defending. That's not going to work. So, what happens if I pick up a pawn now? My opponent could grab back. I could then exchange. So, I go up a pawn and my opponent grabs. And again, I'm in the exact same situation. I have no resulting play and I can't move my, my G rook off of the G uh, file. Because I need it defending this pawn. The queen is blocking all of this. Most notably these two flight squares. Okay. So what happens if I put my rook, my f rook to f4? I'm immediately threatening checkmate. 
while my G-Rook is still defending, so my opponent's not defending. My, my opponent's not threatening anything immediately. I think the only defense there is, since my queen is blocking off the, making a wall the king can't, this is starting to look good because the threat here, my opponent would have to capture my rook and then I could capture back, basically allowing me to go up a full exchange. Now I just have to go through and double check. Is my opponent required to make that trade? Is there anything they could do here? No, because going there, I can, I can sneak the rook over and that's checkmate. I think that's the plan, so we're gonna try it. That's our plan. Ah, my opponent is defending different than I expected. Okay, okay. So now this is not a threat because my opponent can capture. Okay, was not expecting that. I could pick up a full rook, though. Queen to h4 with check. Now means I would have one, two attackers. My opponent only have one defender. Yes, success. So we've gone up a full rook, and with our, our rook sitting there defending. So to evaluate how well did I do on that puzzle, that took me six minutes, more or less, of this puzzle. That was a while, that took a while. But the thing to note is that I missed this defensive maneuver. So that's what I'm taking away from this, is don't forget that realistically, they don't have to capture this, what they're actually doing is they're defending the h4 square. And by sliding the rook up, it's a great way to defend that h4 square. So that's what I missed in this exercise, was that this rook, there is, a, there is an additional defensive position or a defensive strategy that my opponent could have. If I was playing this over the board, uh, let me see if I can change this to an analysis. No, it won't let me. Um, that's okay. But if uh, my opponent slid up with this particular maneuver, now, if I were in, let's say, time trouble, right, or if I was um, low on time pressure, and I didn't think about, you know what, if I didn't think about that maneuver, then I would say, you know what, all right, let's just trade rooks, right? Capture, capture. I've traded off a pair of rooks. I'm not really in a better position, but I'm not in a worse position, so I guess that's okay. But by taking the time and thinking that further step and saying, okay, you know, here's, here's a wonderful um, tactic that I have. Now I'm up a full rook. That's, that's pretty good. That's a winning position. So that's what these puzzle trainings can help us do. Let's go to continue training. We'll pick the next one. Okay. So um, I'm down a queen. So I am the black pieces here. And my opponent has just captured my queen. Now, obviously, my first response is immediately, should I capture back? But before we go on instinct, right, we're going to take a minute and look, look it through. This is why puzzles are good, is because you have the time to go through and, and, and analyze and evaluate. Um, so if I look at my position here, I have two pieces. My opponent has two pieces. Uh, we have two rooks, my opponent has two rooks, and I'm just down a whole queen. Okay, so this is a big deal. So getting back to that queen is important. But is there anything else that, that I could do in the process? My first thought is I could grab here with check. And since that comes with check, that forces my opponent to move and then I can respond. But if I do this, if I grab the bishop with my knight, am I potentially losing additional material at the end of that line? Notice if I were to just grab the queen first, then my opponent can simply move the bishop somewhere, right? Uh, my opponent can move the bishop to safety, but by grabbing it now, 
The only reason I can grab it now is because it comes with check. Question is, is the process of getting out of check for my opponent, do they have a way to um, set themselves up in a better position? And I don't think that's the case. Because since it's a check with the knight, there's no blocking it, so the opponent literally has to move. Now, could he take back with the queen? Because if he could take back with the queen, that's a major issue, because then I'm taking the bishop, and he's moving the queen out of harm's way. And in this case, we'd, my opponent can't do that, so we're safe there. The grabs. I don't see anything my opponent could do. I'm not really threatening this rook. Um, I'm just getting check. My opponent, the king has to move, and then I can grab back the queen. And in that case, I'm up a full piece at the end of that line. Let's go for it. Correct. And then grab back. Correct. Booyakasha. Oops, I didn't mean to hit that. Sorry, I was going to go back and reanalyze it again with us. But we got that one right. All right, moving on to the next one. So we're 11 minutes in, and we've only done two puzzles. This is why doing puzzles is worthwhile. You've got the time to do it. Take a moment to evaluate. All right, so now we're white pieces. And from this position, if I look back up one step, so we have just put the black king in check. My opponent's grabbing. Before that, we, if we compare material rook to rook, bishop to bishop, queen to queen, we're basically essentially even in material, except I have just given up a full rook. All right, let's look at... Let's look at see if there's a checkmating pattern here, right? Obviously, that's what whoever was playing this game, that's what they were going for, some kind of mating pattern. So this is covered. Let's look at what's covered. This is covered. Oops. Um, this is covered. This is covered. This is covered. If I stick the queen down here, my opponent just grabs my queen. Um, I can't. What if I go here? Puts my opponent in check, but this is an escape square. I can pick up a bishop, but now I'm down an exchange. Um, what if I push a pawn? This pawn is undefended, so my opponent can take downward. Then. Okay, let's think that one through. That, that, that looks promising. The pawn moves to here. King moves down to here. Right, because if the pawn moves here, then that's covered, that's covered, that's covered. Um, that's blocked, that's blocked. So the king is forced to move down. Okay, so this is a forcing line. So we want to look at forcing lines, because forcing lines, we can, we can predict a little bit better. King moves down to here. And by doing all of this with check, it gives me a chance to not let my opponent capture the queen. And then I slide the queen here. The king, at this point in time, I've got a bishop and a pawn. The king is blockading all three of these. My opponent's king is sitting here. Queen here means the king can, can sneak over and grab. But then queen here. King is sitting on g3. Queen then cuts off all of these. The king cuts off all of these. That would be checkmate, but is that too, too much of an issue? Do I run into any situations? That's what I'm thinking right now. Is I think this is our best chance to start here with, with pushing the g pawn. It forces a series of events. All of these are forcing moves because they all come with check. And the king is very restricted on what it can do. Um, the queen can't get involved. The rook can't get involved. No. All right, what if we start with this first? Yeah. 
It was the exact same sequence, but less steps. Okay. So, um, this push is completely unnecessary, basically giving up those two pawns, because this move comes, and that's covered, that's covered, that's covered. Queen being here covers that. So yeah, again, it forces the king into the center square. The king defends all three, and then we checkmate. Okay, so we missed that one. We had the right concept, but yeah, if we look at this, there's only one legal move for the opponent. Into this, where this is blockaded off. And the queen sitting here, this is a good relationship to know. And the king can't go in either direction. Which actually, in my previous example, the king would end up just gobbling up all this material. And the king would escape for another turn. Actually, so I was completely wrong in that regard. I was close. Close, but not exactly. All right, we'll do one more. We got time for one more puzzle. Say so that's a good puzzle. Move on to the next one. All right. A lot of material on the board. So this, is, this would be a very typical, you know, mid-game type position. We're on move 20. We can go back and look and see how this game developed. Don't know exactly this particular opening. That's okay. So it, it just develops, you know, a lot of developing moves and trading off of stuff. Everybody's setting themselves up. And then we end up in a position here where obviously there is some tactics available to us. So let's see if we can find those tactics. So we are the black pieces. My opponent has simply moved the rook over to align with my queen. Uh, a couple things we can always do. First thing we can do is look at what was the purpose of this move and what did that move give up control of? So by moving this rook, my opponent is putting pressure along this line. Okay. Is that something I need to worry about right now? Probably not. You know, technically, my stuff's defended. There's a lot of material in the way, so we wouldn't really see a... But it looks like maybe my opponent's looking to capture a pawn here. And I can just, well, yeah, I can just capture back, maybe get a queen trade, something like that. Nope, I can't capture back, because that's defended. All right, so this might open up here pretty soon. That's one thing to keep in mind. Next thing to keep in mind is my, the rook sitting over here was defending this file. Is there anything I can use that file for? Not immediately. Right? Not really. We'll keep that in mind. Now, the bigger question is, did, did my opponent, in the process of making that move, did my opponent mess up somewhere? Now, I see a... No, I don't see a tactic. So, if I look at this particular, the F4 square, my opponent has two defenders, and I have two attackers on it. So, I could park my pawn there, Somewhat safely. Parking my pawn there immediately attacks this bishop. But at the same time, it attacks and opens up an attack from my queen to that bishop. So a double attack. That might be what we're looking at here. So that's my, that's, that's my candidate move right now. So my candidate move is pushing my F pawn. Sounds in the background. Let me turn those off. All right. Um, is there anything else that I want to look at, right? We can always take a quick peek at a sacrifice line. We sacrifice the queen here. It forces the king. And then we have no follow-up. So we're okay there. Are there any knight forks that we can be looking for? If I could get a knight to, you know, the e3 square, I could be forking here. But to get a knight there would take a lot of effort. Yeah, we're just not getting there in time. Um, is this bishop doing anything? Not particularly. Am I threatening anything? Is there a threat? Um, not particularly. Is anything lined up? 
right so let's look for alignment issues the queen is not really in line with anything so i don't there's nothing to take advantage of there so i'm going back to my candidate move my original candidate move push the f pawn yes indeed and so in this case my opponent chose to save their bishop now the other thing i need to look at is do i can i capture safely i should have i should have looked one more step further can i capture safely because Capturing get, leaves my rook exposed. My rooks are not connected, right? This bishop is, is in the middle. So I can't really have my other rook capture, but it's defended by my king and by this knight. So I'm really safe. Not really safe. I'm realistically, I am safe. And there's no surprises at this point in time. So yes, I can capture. This rook is defended twice. So we're okay. All right. That's how we do puzzles. That's how we, we take the time, we think it through, and we look for these tactics. Um, there may come a time, and for me there have come several times, when you spot these over the board during a game, and all of a sudden you're like, I know this tactic, I know what to do. I've seen this before. Um, I've seen double attacks, right? We know what to do if a double attack happens. If we get a chance to attack things twice, great. Right. Um, if there's a free check we can throw in somewhere along the way, great, let's do it. So these are the things that we're looking for, and this is why doing puzzles is going to help us with our middle game, because if we see these tactics, like in this particular game, now I'm up a full piece, right? My, my opponent will probably capture back at some point in time. You know, how we continue this game, I'm not sure. You know, we will, we'll work it out. Maybe even pin that rook. Maybe get a knight up here. No, not really. Uh, it would take a lot of effort to get a knight there. But, you know, we could pin that rook. And then maybe get some other attackers on it. Um, who knows? Or maybe my opponent will try, you know... Um, Maybe they'll try something else, right? Maybe they'll try and attack, you know, I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. But maybe we can throw a, a rook up. This comes with checks. So my opponent will be forced to respond. Now, in this case, it's not a good tactic because they don't, they're not forced to respond to capture with the other rook. So they could capture with a knight, thus making this knight no longer a tactic. So these are the steps that we work through, right? This is the continuation that we work through. So that way, as we're playing our games, we're going to see some of this stuff over the board, and we're going to have our brain in process to start scanning the board for, for those double attacks, for, you know, night forks, for um, pieces that are in line that you can take advantage of by throwing your bishop, you know, and, and take advantage of that kind of stuff. So, all right, guys, thanks so much, and uh, we'll do some more of these.